Hey guys, Frank Medic here with Seth once again. Hello! And we've actually hit the point where I've not played ahead, and it's been a very long time since I played this, so let's see how this goes. It'll go great! And all this stuff that we said will be completely pointless if I end up scrapping this because it doesn't go great, so it better. Secrets are out, man. Anyways, back on the time limit. Which means I'm not gonna let Arthur do much talking here, because, uh, we will die. Alright. Passageway has been destroyed, so the only way we're gonna get to the biomass processing room is through the ice droid. Pressure variance too great. Door may not be opened until pressure is equalized. Hmm, the airlock on the other side must still be pressurized. That's why this door won't open. I can put out an audio override code to bypass the safety interlocks, but the rest will be up to you. Here goes. Emergency door release initiated. Please stand by. And that's why we needed Arthur. So we got an explosive charge. And we'll look at that a little later. It's not a matter of life or death! to refill our oxygen. Can't pressurize the area because it's uh low on oxygen. I did die.
Yeah, unfortunately, that means we have to, uh... Do that again. Ray. Yeah, there's a way to work the ice drill that I apparently walked past somewhere. Alright. The passageway has been destroyed. Pressure variance too great. Door may not be opened until pressure is equalized. Hmm, the airlock on the other side must still be pressurized. That's why this door won't open. I can put out an audio override code to bypass the safety interlocks, but the rest will be up to you. Here goes. Emergency door release initiated. Please stand by. Very interesting. Nobody has anything to say about the uh, explosive charge. All my doors are set with explosive charges. I'm pretty sure the timer is actually move-based and not so much time-based. But since we know we have a refill in the middle of this thing, I can look around a little bit without too much fear, you know? Oxygen. I know drill was part of it. But what's the next step? Hey, did it. 
Let's refill here. Yeah, just to make sure I didn't accidentally eat up all the oxygen again. Let's just run the cycle once more. <laughs> Essentially, we're just pulling out ice and then breaking the, uh, melting it and then breaking the hydrogen, the oxygen out of the hydrogen. Gotcha. <laughs> Alright, that should be enough to get us up to the pressurization thing. We can see if that was, uh... <laughs> missing step. Totally planned to show off to show off the doom. Yeah, you gotta, gotta let everybody know that there actually is suffocation threat. Kinda of funny that it just instantly kills you there at that point, isn't it? It's like suddenly, oh, you had like 80% oxygen left, but uh now you have none. Alright, now he shouldn't be dead. The other guy who was in here went around and interacted with all the sculptures like he was looking for the right one. Funny, he really seemed to know what he was doing. The one he eventually settled on is at Programming Station C. First off, let's take a look at this. Just a bomb. <laughs> we have that now. Synaptic polymer gel is programmed. Sort of where my DNA is coded, I suppose. Each new function is mapped independently into a glob of gel like this by stimulating synaptic pathways with the resonance probes. Each program mass is then introduced to the parent nexus where it's assimilated and becomes part of the wetware. A little like an RNA injection. Yeah, here we actually can learn some fake science. Dr. Farnstein had set up a studio in the research lab where I could interface with the painting world. It was kind of important to me. Things that I couldn't figure out, I just put to canvas. After the accident, I had a lot of things I wanted to work out, and the studio was just gone. I guess one day I sort of hit on the idea of using all of this raw material here. It gave me a lot of flexibility. It's a medium I'm familiar with. My own gray matter. Green matter, I suppose. I guess I like the irony, too. The artist cannibalizing himself for his art. Kind of a weird AI, Arthur. You can call this maternity. This is where I was born. The huge womb in the center is where the neurosynaptic polymer gel that makes up my brain mass is grown. Bringing it are the programming stations. Kind of homey, isn't it? 
Why'd you get so quiet for that one, Arthur? It's just gross, man. <laughs> what do you think? Well, if it's brain goop, it's fitting that it's disgusting. Anyways, we're looking for station. We're, we're looking for C. So. That's what it normally does. Arthur could help us out here, but maybe we should try and figure it out ourselves. Just scream at it. It'll work. Ah. I actually don't quite remember what you're supposed to do here. suit. So yeah, that that happened. What did we just see? Electronics and anti system with technology of voice time period. Okay. No, well, that's interesting, but it doesn't really tell us anything, you know? But yeah, that's all we needed to do deep mystery in space. Great. So yeah, aside from the little gotcha with having to go get Arthur to be able to do that zone, that is the only zone that doesn't require hopping between time periods a few times. Alright. go back there again? Are we done? We are done with there. That All is right. it. 
So let's go take a look at another zone for a little bit before we call this a video. All right. Let's go to France. <coughs> so many words. You can just kind of skip through these. You can read them if you want. There will be a human presence in the environment. Darn those human people. Turn my translate chip back on, it keeps turning off. Speaking of human presence. Hello. Uh, well that was lucky. That was also in the files that we looked at at the beginning of the game. Stay on, you garbage. Anyways, first thing we're going to want to do here is, uh, let's just, let's just <laughs> take that. The wooden roofs were covered with tin, I think to prevent being set ablaze by flaming arrows. And here we can learn a bit about castle construction from Arthur as we walk around. Why does he know about it? If someone should get a glimpse of us up here, in this suit we might pass as a knight, but I think we should be careful not to be seen. Yeah. Those boulders were dropped on any Nimrod trying to climb the walls. I'm sure that won't come up. Lost stairs. It's kind of interesting how they use the more finished stone on the outside of the walls to make the castle look more imposing, and use the rough stone on the inside. The space in between was generally filled with rubble and, oh, I don't know, annoying singing frogs and metal boxes. I don't think that's true. Sounds locked to me. <laughs> Okay. Cool joke. This castle really was the jewel in King Richard's crown. He once wrote about Chateau Bear. How beautiful is my year-old daughter. When Philip Augustus had said that he would take this castle so its walls were made of iron, King Richard retorted that he would hold it if its walls were made of butter. Then King John the Soft Sword took over. When Philip was done with this place, you could pour it on your popcorn. Okay. Why do you know this crap? When Philip Augustus heard about Richard's death in 1199, he set about retaking Normandy. And within three years, in October of 1203, he was knocking on Chateau Gaillard's door with a formidable army. John answered the door with 300 knights, 3,000 horsemen, and 4,000 foot soldiers and assorted ruffians, who tried to surprise Philip's army with a night attack. Big mistake. He wasn't counting on the new cohesion and confidence of Philip's army in the light of Richard's death. They were slaughtered. These wooden hoardings here? They were put up for defense before a siege to protect archers, and get this, allow the soldiers to drop big, heavy, painful things on the attackers below. Charming, isn't it? I mean, it was ancient war, dude.
So we do want to be a little careful here. Like, you see that dude there? We don't want to get too close to him. We do want this, though. So a clever French knight figures out that he and a few men can get into the castle by climbing up through a toilet. So right now they must be fighting it out at the main gate. By now there will only be about 60 English soldiers remaining anyway. No wonder this place seems deserted. Everybody's dead. That's how I feel I need. Have a save name for that. Uh. Apparently, this translate ship's only going to stay on while I have it active. I mean, really, it's more for fun than anything else, since most of the times it's going to activate is going to involve when you're getting killed. But. Ah, see that bridge to the inner Bailey? This was the castle's one weakness. Under cover of the bridge, Philip Augustus's men managed to dig under the wall and collapse a section of it in what they called a, um, let me look it up, a sapping operation. What are you looking it up on? When an attacker would sap the wall of the castle, they would dig a tunnel underneath the foundation supported by a wooden framework. They would then set fire to the wooden beams and the tunnel would collapse under the wall, bringing it down. So the game hasn't really said a lot about it, but there are two kinds of evidence. There's major evidence, which are like that thing that we just found will automatically get recorded. Okay. In some areas there is minor evidence that so you have to kind of spot yourself. Things that just don't seem like they should be there, maybe. If I recall, we don't want to go too far. I hope the serfs have umbrellas. Ah, classic Godfrey. Simplicity at its finest. You tiny brained wipers of other people's bottoms. I fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelled of elderberries. Sorry, I always wanted to say that. <laughs> Gonna just uh, let that one stand. We seem to be getting closer to where that catapult is hitting, and I'd be willing to bet their aim isn't getting worse. That is, in fact, a bit of a hint, I recall. hint of don't get smashed? You want to know what made this castle such a unique piece of military architecture? King Richard's design for the keep and inner bailey. Look, see those rib-like structures ringing the top of the keep? They were designed to funnel drop projectiles down to the skirt-like plinth at the bottom, which bounced the stones in kind of a fan-shaped trajectory. This way there was nowhere that the attackers could approach the castle without being blown. Save real quick. Is there somewhere you want to wait a little bit to let a rock smash through? There's a man. That was it. <laughs> you got dead. There's some good pictures for these, though, so. Yeah, so we got one of four critical evidence. You need all four of these to be able to win the game at all. Okay. These you don't have to find at all. Just extra points. And research is from, like, looking stuff up. All right.
Now remember, we can actually stand right here. Yeah. You missed me by that much. Yeah, let's just hop down here. This music. Buildings in this time were built of a half timber framework with gaps filled with wattle and dog. God, I hate English food. Anyway, basically a mat of woven reeds covered with mud and clay. Good to know. I guess. I recall one of the supporting evidence is literally like some broken glass somewhere where it shouldn't be that's kind of hard to pick out, so... That could have been dangerous. Luckily, he didn't turn his head. At all. Knowing that, we probably might not want to walk out there. as far as we can get. We might be able to get a little farther, but uh, I don't remember for sure. But All I know right. we need this hammer. Alright. So let's uh, save. It's hammer time. Okay. Yeah. And let's just poke around a little bit and see what happens. Next time I die, or decide to dive on the board. We're just looking around randomly. We can call the video. Alright. Because we accomplished some things, right? Hey, now there's a nasty looking rig. The blacksmith would use something like that to hold cows and horses still for shoeing. No doubt some of them enjoyed it, too. I mean, Still, there's nothing more disturbing than a cow into bondage. Thanks, Arthur. This is an old wood-burning fork, which blacksmiths at the time used to heat up and soften raw iron, which they would then hammer to create rod or forged tools and weapons. This fire can only get up to about 1300 degrees Celsius. Stop me, I'm getting too technical. So they would be limited to casting softer metals, such as bronze, copper, Popping the bellows does air through the coals, stoking the fire. Try it, you weakling. Yeah, if we had some nice soft metal, we could maybe do a thing. But we don't, so... Of course, there is none near the forge, apparently. It's the incredible sharpening wheel, the latest in lightweight stone technology. It spins, it sparks, it sharpens your knives. It's absolutely free with your six-piece set of Ginsu broadswords. Where's the slag pile? They used it all.
باشه Well, now that I found that, I guess I should probably save it again. Yeah. I'll still save it on hammer time, though. <laughs> yeah, see, it'll give you a warning if you're by something, I guess, but, uh... Was that one of those non-required pieces? Yep. That's either a very dirty mode or a very clean sewer. Dirty mode. Go sweated. There nice. we go. Kind of a neat effect though, with it. Well. What am I gonna do? Turn this on. Let's uh. So if you just like sit here long enough, eventually they will kill you, which I kind of want to show off because it's pretty good. How did they get that up there? Yeah, see, one piece of supporting evidence. What a waste of a cow! I think I'm gonna want this one to end right here. Actually, I, I feel like this is probably the most appropriate point to end this. All right. Next time we'll uh, probably go to another time zone and do something else. Okay. Anyways, later, guys.